Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. Let's all stand up, everyone at home here, and let's just pray to get ready to receive the Word of God. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time that we could come together to worship you. Father, we're here just like it was back in the day. They'd be outside and you'd be teaching sometimes for hours. And people would be out there in the hot sun hearing a word from you. And I just thank you, Lord, as we're here, we're not here just to come together. We're here to get equipped. We're here to be trained. We're here to learn. And we're here, Father God, to learn something so we could impact someone else's life with the knowledge and wisdom that you give us today. Help us to grow as a church as we grow in knowledge of who you are. Speak through me today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Awesome. Today what I want to talk to you guys about is, is a statement, unleashing the power of God through the church. Unleashing the power of God through the church. God has chosen to do every single thing on this earth that he's ever going to get done through his church. There's no power that he distributes on this earth unless he does it through his church. And who's the church? Every single believer is the church. We come together and we're the church. But you as an individual, you as an individual are the church. So I want to talk to you for the next couple of weeks. I want to talk to you about the power of the church and what is the church and how important the church is. Bill Hybel said this. He says, the local church is the hope of the world. The church is the hope of this world. There's not an organization or a group on this earth that their assignment is to come against Satan and everything that he's doing, but the church. If anyone's going to receive eternal life, it's going to be through an encounter with the church of Jesus Christ. If anyone's going to be healed and touched by the presence of God, it's going to be through the church. If any atheist is going to become a believer and have faith in God, it's going to come through an encounter, through a real, a real encounter and experience with God through the church. So I'll give you an example. If, we're gonna, if you have an atheist, you're not going to argue them into believing. So it doesn't matter how well you know uh, geology, archaeology, and you know the history of the world. That's not how you're going to win them over. You're going to win them over when they experience God, when you show them God. People are looking to see God, and the only place they're going to see God is through the church. They're going to see the love of God through the church, the word of God through the church. They're going to experience the power of God through the church. It's the church that's here on this earth to bring the kingdom of heaven here on this earth the way it is in heaven. So we're the most important entity in the whole world right now. There's not a more important group than the church. Without the church, no one will receive eternal life. Without the message of the church, no one will ever be set free. Without the church, no one will ever be healed. No one will ever be restored. The hopeless will never have hope again. The su person that's full of su suicidal spirits will just kill themselves. But thank God for a church that's full of the presence of God and has the message of hope and has the message of freedom freedom the church the church so there's a fight against the church so let's first define the church and all I want to do today is just define a portion of the church what is the church the church is the body of Christ say with me is the body of Christ it's very simple that if God's going to touch someone he's going to have to do it through his body so he's the head of the body. Christ is the head of the body. We're the body. You know what that means is Christ thinks it and then the body does it. I thank God that my body is together with my mind. I thank God that my mind is telling my body to say what I'm saying right now and my body is cooperating. 
Because if it wasn't cooperating, it'd be a hot mess right now. You would say, what's wrong with Marco? He seems like he can't communicate. He looks like he's trying to say something, but I'm not getting it. And the only reason right now that you're functioning and I'm functioning because your head and your body are working in unison. So how it should work is the head and the body should work in unison. We are the body of Christ. Christ is still healing. Christ is still saving. Christ is still delivering. Christ is still speaking, but he's doing it through his body. Say it with me. We're the body. We're the body. So everything that God does on earth, he does it through his body. This body is comprised of every believer on the face of the earth. So anytime God wants to feed the hungry, heal a broken heart, transform a heart, save a soul, encourage someone, make a disciple, preach the gospel, reach a city, he does it through his body, the church. He says, I want to do that. I want to reach them. So he gives a vision to the body and the body carries it out. See, the, in 1 Corinthians 12, 27, it says this. Now you, look what the scripture says. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. So we are the body of Christ and each one of us are individually a member or a part of this body. Just like a human body has different parts, the church of God, Jesus' body, has different parts. And what that means, I have different parts. I have an ear or ears, both of them, right? I, you, have, you have eyes and then you have a heart and then you have a liver and a kidney and all, you have feet, hands. You have different parts. What, what makes you whole is all these parts working together and allows you to operate. See, without my feet, I can't be standing up here. Without my eyes, I can't see you. So what I'm, all I'm saying is I need every part of my body. You need, and God's saying, I need every part of the body. So the fullness of the power of God is in his body. I just said something really big. The fullness of the power of Jesus Christ is in his body. Jesus is still here on earth in his full power in his body. Let's look at this verse in, in Ephesians 1.22. It says this, And he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, headship exercised through the church. So God, just make it simple. God is saying all the power, supreme power, he's placed it in the church. This is very important for you to know which is the, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body, listen to this, lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete. Now, I want you guys, the full measure of Christ is in his body. The, the power that makes people complete and whole and full and fulfilled is in his body. And that's why there's a fight against the church. Because the only hope for this world to be complete, this empty world, the reason we're drinking so much, the reason we're fighting so much, the reason we're partying so much, the reason we're always looking for someone else to make us complete or the next thing is because we're empty. And the only thing that can make us whole is Christ. And the power to make people whole, the full measure to make people whole, the power to make people whole is in the church, in his body. So we're the answer. I, you know, we're voting and all that stuff. And I say vote, vote, for sure vote. But voting and whoever gets in office is not going to fix the world's greatest problems. The greatest problems that we have on this earth are spiritual problems. And the spiritual problems are causing breakdowns in our families. The spiritual problems are making us depressed. 
The spiritual problems are making us addicted. The spiritual problems are making us angry. The spiritual problems are making us violent. The spiritual problems are making us divided. The spiritual problems are the issues of the day. And no government, no entity, no amount of money can solve or fix the soul issues. A psychiatrist can help you cope, but they can't fix you. There's a God and the fullness of Christ and his spirit is in the body of Christ. We are the hope for this world today. Jesus is still the answer in a believer. You guys understand that? Because we could get so caught up in dealing with symptoms, but if you don't get to the root of the issue, you can't fix it. Oh, maybe I need a new husband. No, maybe I need a wife. That's not the issue. What you, what you need is for God to change you and change them through his power and make you complete. Someone say, the body of Christ. So, so there were, the, the scripture says, well, I'll read just something else I wrote. Christ is the only one that can make anyone complete, whole and truly fulfilled. The power to make people complete lives only in the church body. God has empowered his church to fill the earth with Jesus. He fills us, he fills us to fill the empty souls in this hurting and dying world with what we've been filled with. So he fills us with Jesus. And what are we supposed to do? Fill the earth with Jesus. Not with anger. And that's why the devil loves changing our agendas. Our agenda is very simple. The world needs Jesus. I receive Jesus, and I'm going to give Jesus. And the only group on the earth that can give Jesus is his body. So look at it. Each one of us plays a crucial part in the body of Christ. So I play a part. You are irreplaceable, and so is every other member of the body of Christ. No one here is indispensable. What I mean, no one here is replaceable. You're not replaceable, and neither is the person sitting next to you. It's so easy to belittle ourselves and belittle others and start thinking, I don't have a lot to give, and I'll tell you who's telling you that. It's the devil. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. No one can take your place on the team. Let's look at this. We need each other to we need each other to be complete and fulfill God's purpose for our lives. Without you in place, our church is not complete. We need you. Online, we need you. Without you, we're not complete. I want every part of my body working and in place. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 14. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. That makes sense. If the foot says, I am not part of the body because I'm not a hand, does that make it any less part of the body? And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. God has put each part when he wants it. I'm going to just give you some quick insight on this scripture. Insight number one, we need to be careful that we're not saying, that we're, we have to be careful what we're saying about our role in the body of Christ. The scripture says here that the foot is saying something. I'm not part of the body. Because I'm not a hand. Don't talk yourself out of being a part of the body of Christ. Human nature causes us to put ourselves down and makes us feel inadequate and will even tell us, you don't fit in. No one even notices you. If we let the enemy continue to speak these self-destructive words over ourselves, we will find ourselves eventually saying the same things about others 
which will result in us becoming super critical and separating ourselves from the body of Christ. We need to be careful, foot. Is there any foots in here? You wouldn't even know if you're a foot. But the scripture says the foot is speaking, and he's saying, this is what he's saying. He says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand. You know what that means? He's comparing himself to a hand. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others because you only fail in comparison. You're not created to be exactly like somebody else. You are a unique masterpiece created for a perfect work. I'm not Joel Osteen. I'm not T.D. Jakes. I'm not, you know, I, I'm not Billy Graham. I'm just little old Marco G. That's all I am. The minute I start trying to be a Joel Osteen is the moment I'm going to fail because God does not bless duplicates. He only blesses originals. Some will say I'm an OG in this. You guys understand that? You're an original. Stop tearing yourself down and realize that you're part of the body. Yes, you're not a hand and you're a foot. Yes, you're not an you're not a, 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 a ear, you're an eye. But whatever part you are, we need you in place and just be who call, God called you to be and be part of the body of Christ. Don't talk yourself out of this. You guys get that? Don't talk yourself out. You belong. Say with me, I belong. I don't belong. I don't fit in. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. You know who's speaking to you? The devil. The devil. The devil's speaking to you. He wants you to not belong. He wants to separate you from the church body. Now just think about this. When God describes the body, he does not describe it or the church. He doesn't describe it as an organization. He describes it as an organism. He didn't say that you're an organization. He says that you're a body. You're an organism. Okay, so this is what happens. When you separate yourself, separate yourself from the organism or from the whole, this is what happens to you. You begin to die. So the enemy knows the way to kill your spirit, kill your dream, is to separate you from the church. So there's a fight, and the enemy's doing everything that he can is to separate believers and take them away from the church. The only one that wants to separate you from the church and separate you from Christ is the devil himself. So you got to be careful that you're not talking yourself out of something you're supposed to be talking yourself into. Don't let someone offend you out of position. Just because my arms hurt doesn't mean I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to wait until it gets healed, and then we're going to keep on operating. I've broken this leg two or three times, but I didn't just cut my leg out because it was broken, just because it was a little hurt. Don't let someone hurt you out of your, of, out of your position, out of your church, out of your future. Come on. Don't keep on telling the story on how you got hurt and then you left. Because the moment you leave, this is what happens. You just got separated from the power. You got separated from the body. And this is what's happening. You're dying. And now you're prey for the devil. You're prey for the devil because the devil's seeking whom he may devour. The devil is only looking for people that have separated themselves. Because together, the devil can't get you. Because for him to get you, he has to get through all of us. Come on now. When you're connected to Christ, connected to the body, you're undefeatable. It's when you get separated from hurt or you, you start talking yourself into, I don't need the church now. Why don't you need the church now? Because you're doing so good. Do you for, did you forget where you were before the church, before Christ came into your life? Do you remember you couldn't cope? Do you remember you weren't free? Do you remember that you were in bondage? Do you remember nothing was working out until a member of the body of Christ came and told you, I was where you were at and I was disconnected and I was empty, but Jesus came in and made me complete. Don't mistake don't start thinking just because you're blessed that you're actually in a good place. 
Because you could have a lot of money and things be going really good and you just got your new, new ride and you got your new crib and everything and your new girlfriend. Everything looks like it's a, you got new clothes, you got a new purse, you got your new shoes. It looks like everything's good, but something's happening. You're beginning to separate yourself from the body of Christ. And the moment you're doing that, you're pray for the enemy. And what does the enemy do? Attack your mind. What does the devil do? What? And you start speaking like this foot. You got hand to foot disease. I'm not part of it. I don't need the church. I, I'm all good. No, you. I thank God. I thank God that my body is not fighting against itself. Because that's an illness. You understand? That, that when your body starts fighting against itself, you are dying. Don't fight against your purpose. Stay connected to the body of Christ. We're the most powerful organism on earth, entity on earth. We're here to come against all the darkness that's in this world. Without the church, there's no hope for this world. So inside number one, we need to be careful what we're saying about our role in the body of Christ. Don't talk yourself out of being part of the body of Christ. Insight number two. God is the only one that places us right where he wants us. Insight number two, God is the one, the scripture said this, is that God has put each part just where he wants it. Every part where he wants it. I put the heart where I want it. I put the tongue where I want it. I put the ears where I want it. I put the eyes where I want it. Thank God the eyes can't tell the creator where he wants to be. Because my eyes might all of a sudden betray me and want to be underneath my feet. And this is what happens when you start trying to place yourself where you're not supposed to be. You start, this is what I said, you start, you start becoming dysfunctional. Your family's dysfunctional. You can no longer see. You can never, no longer walk. You are no longer whole. You are no longer healthy. Thank God you don't decide where he places you. He decides where he places you. You got to start getting this. Because the enemy, what he wants you to do is place yourself. He places. So, someone says, God places me. He is the one that gives us purpose and places us right where he wants us in his local church to fulfill his purpose. We don't choose what part of the body we will be or what church we belong to. God does. This blew my mind one day because when we started this church, um, I, we started this church because God gave me a dream and he spoke to me. I didn't have a drive to be a pastor. That was not my drive. My drive was to love people, disciple them. If I learn it, I'm going to share it. I love that. I love pe helping people overcome. I, I just love that. I love people, helping people become winners, know Jesus Christ, be set free. I love that. But there was a day that God called me to be a pastor of a local church. Not just a pastor, a pastor of a local church in San Bernardino. And I said, Pastor, how did you get to that point? Well, God spoke to me. And I'm not one of those guys that's always dreaming because you don't hear me coming up here. I had this dream. I had another dream. I'm not necessarily that person. But I got a dream that day, and God spoke to me specifically. And he says, Marco, he says, go. They're sheep, and you're their shepherd. If you don't go, they won't have a shepherd. And when I, when I heard that, I, I understood what he was saying, but it was different concept that I was used to thinking. What I always thought that what I needed to do was find a church just that I liked. But the problem with that is when the church didn't operate in the way I liked it, I would just leave. I didn't realize that God actually called me to a local body. And I was supposed to be part of that family. Not just come as a visitor or come as a member, but to come to be part of a family or part of a body. So God has called you to the Wayworld Outreach, to be part of this body. God has called me to the local church of San Bernardino, 
and I'm not going anywhere ever, just so you know. I'm going to be, yes, we're going to start churches in Watts, in Pomona, in Chicago, in Detroit, in New York, in Philadelphia, and whatever, whatever hood we can find, we'll, find, we'll start a church. But the reality is, I'm not leaving here because God has planted me here. And everything I'll do is going gonna, is gonna to be fed through my roots. You'll never grow and be healthy if you're constantly being transplanted. The reality is eventually you're just going to die. Stop looking for what's already here somewhere else. God has provided every single thing that you need to, to be healthy, to be strong, to accomplish God's work in your life right there where he has planted you. You guys get that? So who, who is the one that places us wherever he wants us? We don't choose that. And the enemy will do everything that he can. He says, you know, I just, I just feel like I'm committed to the whole body of Christ. Everybody. The whole body of Christ. I understand that. You're part of the whole body of Christ. But you can't be committed to every church in the world. Just like you can't live in every home. You got to at least have an address. So why would you have a physical address and not have a spiritual address? So you need to know who your pastor is, what the vision that you're under, what we're accomplishing together, what the assignment is. You have to know where you're rooted. You have to know where's your home base. You have to know where God has placed you. And you'll reach the world from the place that God has placed you. Come on. Some of us right now, this is a word for someone because you've been, this is what's been happening. You've been going all over the place. And you love the whole body of Christ just like I do. But the reason you really can't grow and you really can't accomplish everything that God wants you to accomplish, you know the vision is way bigger than you're experiencing. And there's one thing that's missing. You're not rooted and planted in a local body of Christ with a pastor and with a group of people that are your family. It's getting quiet up in here. You know what we're doing, why it gets quiet? Because we're coming against a spirit of independence. You're not created to be independent. You were created to be dependent on God and dependent on each other. Come on, I need you, you need me to operate. Is that right? Do we need each other? See, there's a spirit that doesn't want you to be planted or connected. And this spirit, and it doesn't want you to be committed. And if you don't watch it, if you talk yourself out of being planted and committed to a local church, you'll find yourself in a homeless community. With a whole bunch of people that they're actually talking against the church because they got hurt in the church. Church hurt will take you out of position. If you got hurt in church, get healed in the church. And let God use that as a ministry, come on, a ministry foundation to help others get healed. It's not time to run from church to church, building to building, pastor to pastor, ministry to ministry. It's time to get planted in a house and watch God, come on, cause you to flourish right there where you're planted for the glory of God. Let's conquer city after city together. Let's get an army together that's walking together, marching together, moving together. Come on, we're family in the good times, in the bad times, in the difficult we're here, thick or thin, till death do we part. You know what's crazy? In the hood, people die for a neighborhood. They'll even go deeper. They'll tattoo their hood on their chest. Puro sur, fontana, rifamos y que Some of us will even tattoo our favorite sports team. Yes, Raiders, Oakland Raiders. I mean, um, Las Vegas Raiders. No, I mean, uh, LA Raiders. No, I mean, uh. (laughs) 
Well, the, you know, with the, the tattoo I got, it said was uh, way before th- before they were in L.A. It's, 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 now they're in the north side, and I don't know, man, but. <laughs> but the lengths that we would go for our sin and for our entertainment and for the things we love, but when it comes to God, we can become fickle. And then we wonder why we're not progressing and growing and seeing God do miraculous things and great things. Because what God is calling us to do, we're going to do it as a team. And you know who's going to get the honor and the glory? Not one individual. It's going to be God. Come on, it's going to be Christ and his body together. This next move of God is not going to be done by a whole bunch of superhero Christians. It's going to be done by a whole bunch of humble Christians that are planted in the house of God. And we're going to do this together. We're going to invade hell together. We're going to save souls together. We're going to take over cities together and we're going to give him all the honor and all the glory give God some praise come on we're going to do this together and I'm going to end it with this we are we are all parts of the body of Christ this is real deep you maybe never heard this before and belong to each other we belong to each other you do not belong to yourself you belong to everyone that's sitting next to you your money doesn't belong to you your gifts don't belong to you so you can't hoard it I'm mad I'm not going to sing up here no more you can't even make that decision because your gift don't belong to you it belongs to the church get up here Get up here. Well, I'm not going to preach no more. I'm not going to teach that class no more. Yes, you are because you don't belong to you. Your mouth don't belong to you. God put that message in your mouth, that gift on your life. Get up here and start teaching. Well, you know, I I, I just ain't going to give no more. It's not even your money. It's God's money. Come on, God's giving you and bless you so you could come on, so you can invest in the kingdom, so you can worship God with everything that you got. Your money don't even belong to you. Be careful what you're saying in these last days. Hallelujah, come on. Last verse. I'm proud of you guys. You guys handle this son. But the truth is, you've handled the son for other stuff. A matter of fact, the truth is, You've gone to Disneyland and paid $800,000 for your family to get in to stand in the hot sun for two hours to get on a dumb ride that you've been on before. It's a smile, yeah, smile, yeah. <laughs> Some of you guys stand an hour to go, just go fly with Dumbo. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> it was? It's fun? Or you went to a Dodger game. They don't put no shade for you in the Dodger. Come on. And they don't put no shade for you. You're, you're, you have your hot dog. You're sitting in the sun. You're going, go. And then that charge four hours later. Right? Now, why wouldn't we do a little hour for God? Come on, are there any true worshipers? Come on, we're showing right now. We're true worshipers in this house. We're planted in the house of God. I don't care if you turn up the heat. We'll still come here and worship God because our worship is not dependent on the weather. It's dependent on our relationship with God. He's been too good to me for me not to worship him in difficult circumstances. Come on, give God a little bit more praise. Stand up, everybody, since y'all are standing up already. But this verse says this. In Romans 12, 5 says, So it is with Christ's body. Who's Christ's body? When God wants to heal somebody, what does he use? His body. He said, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. What he's saying is, I want to touch them. Will you touch them for me? They're hurting. I see their heart. They're discouraged. They're broken. They want to die. 
that just got the worst news in the world. Will you be my mouthpiece and let them know that I'm here, that I love them? Will you encourage them for me? They don't know they're lost for eternity, headed for hell. Will you let them know what I did for them so they could be born again and saved? I just need a mouthpiece. I know if someone tells them about me, they'll be saved just like Isaac was saved. They'll be born again. They'll have a new life. Would you go ahead and share me with them? There's someone hungry. They're not sure where they're gonna get their next meal for their family. Will you go ahead and feed them for me? Would you go to the grocery store? And buy them a little groceries and let them know. Take that pressure off that mama with those little kids and say, it's okay. We got you. You're never going to go hungry in our watch. We have more than enough in our cupboards. You could always come to our cupboards and eat. We're going to be good. God has blessed me. Someone's naked. We clothed them. You got enough clothes in your closet. Maybe it's time to clean out your closet and bless somebody with your nice stuff. God, I want to clothe them. Jesus, I want to clothe them. I want you to clothe them for me. I want to go into tough neighborhoods that have no hope where there's just drug dealing and there's just abuse and hurt and hopelessness. Will you go in there and help them by giving them my message so they can be born again? I could change their hearts and empower them to overcome the challenges that they've been facing from one generation to the next generation. If you don't go, they won't know. It just remains the same. This work is a very unselfish work. And we cannot get it done with selfishness, not even a bit of it. It says, we are many parts of one body. And we all belong to each other. The scripture says that. We all belong to each other. Online. We all belong to each other. If there's been a thought that's been separating you from the body of Christ, rebuke that thought, renounce that thought. If you've been hurt, get reconciled. Forgive, let it go. And if someone specifically has hurt you, just go to them and squash it and stay connected. You're going to be okay. Some of us have been hurt so much, you're scared to be committed to any relationship. So you put walls of non-commitment. But well, right now, I'm just passing through the way, just so you know, so don't get your hopes up. And you're only saying that because you're scared not to get hurt again. And you're hiding your pain, and you're still trying to protect yourself from getting hurt. And what happens in, when that happens, you get offended for anything. Because it's, it's kind of like this. Before you reject me, I'll reject you. Me leaving will be on my terms, not yours. So you go into relationships, all your relationships with that kind of mindset, with a big wall up, looking to be offended or for something to go wrong. So you have an excuse to take off again. But God doesn't want you on the run. This is what God is saying. Daughter, son, come back. I have a home for you. And in my home, there's abundance. In my home, there's peace. In my home, there's purpose. In my home, there's grace. In my home, there's provision. In my home, there's love. In my home, is every single thing that you need. I want to give it to you. Will you just come back home? And some of us have been here at the way, but you still have not made it your home yet. It's time for you to have a home and be part of a family. God doesn't want you lonely by yourself. He wants you to be part of a family. It's okay for the first time to trust one more time. Just trust one more time. It's okay to have some mothers and fathers over you. And it's okay to be, for you to be vulnerable, be a son or a daughter. You say, okay, I'll let you take care of me and help me. I pray that we'll become more united than we ever have. And we'll begin to trust each other because we love each other and we belong to each other. I trust my hand. 
that it will do what it's, I don't, my heart, my hand is not there to harm me. Stop thinking that your hand or your foot or your eye or people around you are there to harm you. We belong to each other to help each other. It's going to be okay. Pastor Rob, would you close us in, in prayer online here? How many feel the presence of God? Come on. I'm going to keep on talking about the church because we really need to get this foundation for the next two weeks. I don't want you to miss anything. Um, we're going to see how this works. Maybe next week it'll be a little cooler. We'll see how it goes. But we've got two weeks or two weeks from now that we have this big grand opening. And ladies, um, after the ninth is going to be the 16th. We're going to still have Fire Friday, but it's just going to be women's conference. Ch talk yourself in. You belong there at the women's conference to hear the word of God. That word is going to get you through this year. It's strategic words that you need to hear. Get in position. I love you guys. After this, we'll take a little break and then and then we'll come back together, leaders. And I have just a we have a quick word, go over the vision of the church, where we're headed, and what God's doing. Thank you, Robert. Yes, thank you. How many enjoyed that word here? Wasn't that awesome? And at your at your homes right now, what a great word. Let's bow our head and close our eyes. And you're at home right now. Just take a moment, bow your head and close your eyes for a second. I'm gonna lead you into two prayers today. For the ones that's here, leaders, and you're at your home, two prayers. Number one, if you're saying, Pastor. I would love to give my life to Jesus. I would love to surrender everything to God. Maybe you're at a home right now. You're watching. You, you joined a watch party for the first time. Maybe you're at your job right now and you're listening to this message. Someone told you to tune in. And you're saying, man, I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of all of my sins. And maybe you're here today. You know, with a crowd this size, maybe there's some teenagers here, some young adults. There's an adult here. Maybe you just came today. you seen the people and you said, man, is there service today? You just kind of drove in. Here as well, if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're at home. Get ready. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. And also in this prayer, we're going to include, if this is your church, the way that God has called you here, and you already knew, God's been talking to you. You're at home. So God's been talking to me. This is my home. This is my church. This is my family. I'm joining this family today. We're in the last days. God, right now, we've taken little... In a sense of a break, all of us meeting together, now we're bringing all the generals, all the churches back together for these last days. The title was this, Unleashing the Power. Unleashing the power through the church. There's a power that's released. That means we're going to be walking the streets, healing hands. People are going to get healed. We'll be at a watch party and we'll cast out demons at a watch party. You'll go to a cousin's house, you'll cast out demons, and you'll begin to move in the power of God. Every head by every eyes closed, you're at your house. We're going to include both prayers. You want to get saved and also join in and say, you know what? This is my house. This is my family. Lord, help me to keep rooted. Every head by every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Savior, my Lord my everything. I repent of every wrong that I have done. From this day forward, I am saved. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. And Jesus, I ask you now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to remain part of the church body. I cancel division. I will stay rooted if you have called me to the Way World Outreach, I am staying rooted. Father, I thank you. I come against the lies of the enemy. This is my church. This is my home. This is my family. I'm part of the family of God. Thank you for sending me here. Because, Lord, it's you who places us where we're supposed to be. And I am so thankful for you placing me at the Way World Outreach. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer at your home or even here, welcome to the body of Christ. We have some altar workers here. If anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you guys. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Way World Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.